Okay, you all good? Let's do it. Hello and welcome to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. You're listening to the B2C Lead Gen Podcast. My name is Daniel Hopewell here with Simon Blaney and this is episode 71, The Value of Creating Quality Content for Lead Gen. And today we have Tony Cohn from Everflow joining us, I believe from Sacramento, California, although it's hard to kind of see from the, the Zoom window, but what, I, what I've looked at the IP. Um, Tony, how's it going? Yeah. Good, how are you? How's it going? Uh, we're good. Not quite as excited in Sheffield as I'm sure it is in California, but it is actually very hot today. So uh, yeah, we're, we're good. It's the end of the day here, early day for you. And, um, it's about, yeah, it's about 30 it's degrees here, Tony, which is virtually unheard of. Yeah, it's uh, the weather just keeps getting more zany. Um, here it's always hot, so um, we just kind of stay indoors. So that's how we, we deal with it. So yeah, that's how we beat the heat. But yeah, it's always hot here. So cool. I love that. Yeah, five minutes in. British cliches talking about the weather. We can't help ourselves. So sorry about that, Tony. Um, we'll talk about <laughs> leisure. Now. Far more interesting for the people listening. Um, the value of creating quality content. We talked. We pitched this idea for a podcast, and we talk about we're, out, we're focusing on today's show. Um, let's start with the basics, quality content and lead gen. Why is it so important? Uh, it's important because it, it's probably the best way to get uh, results. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's tempting when you're in a, the lead gen space to kind of think, okay, how can I get revenue as fast as possible? How can I, you know, scale things as fast as possible? But it all comes down to kind of building relationships and, and building content that keeps people coming back and I think that quality content does that um, there's so many examples of sites that we all use daily that we visit to um, that we trust that we learn about and kind of get used to and and so we need that in quality content and it helps you helps you kind of um, you know trust who you're who you're reading and, and get used to the source and kind of go from there so I think it, I think it's definitely important and it's, it's all about kind of not even um, you know, it's about kind of just having a relationship built and having um, having it going. And I think that's what quality content is about. And do you have any like specific medium that the best quality content is delivered via like by video or written or imagery or anything? Yeah. Or do you think it's like all of them combined or? You know, it's, it's an interesting question. I, I think it comes down to knowing your audience and knowing sort of uh, where they hang out. You know, it's so like, for example, if you're creating in the B2B space, if you're creating content, you know, you want to have stuff um, on LinkedIn, you want to have kind of lengthy posts, you want to have it, um, you know, you want to be a frequent poster there. And so that's kind of a nice source. But for example, if you have a product that's more visual, so if you have like a, um, like a tool for doing something or an exercise, you know, supplement or something like that, then something like a YouTube is better for that, you know, and, and uh, if you have something that uh, kind of works well with teaching then TikTok would be better than that for that so it's all about kind of knowing your audience and knowing where they hang out and I think not trying to do everything at one time and kind of thinking well if I just go everywhere like a scattershot approach that's going to work um, but more of like a focus approach where you're like you know I know where these guys my audience here's you know they're here this is what they want to learn about this is where I post that so it definitely I definitely recommend kind of going with um, knowing where your audience is at and kind of posting there to clarify, we're talking about just so we know we're talking about B2C here, right, Tony? Um, yes, yes, yeah. I think when you think about sort of content, uh, content especially like quality content, and the, you think of it almost like as a B2B thing, maybe. And um, B2C perhaps is a bit more transactional, and like you said, it's about building relationships. So, I guess what can we learn from the B2B side of it and open it up in that way? Yeah, I mean the B two B side is is it's such a longer sales cycle. It's it's you know it's months, years, and it's it's all about like building this like really steady relationship. But I think there is a similar relationship component to B to Z B to Z because essentially you're you want people to trust you quickly, and you want, you want them to know okay who is this? Can you know what are they talking about? Do I do I buy into what they're saying? So I think there is a relationship component. It's just magnified a lot. So I think that. Some of the B2B stuff is useful in B2C. Um, and you can definitely kind of draw from it. And so I, I would say that's a, a very similar thing. And then I think also for um, B2B, it is a lot about knowing your channel and knowing, knowing your audience. Um, and, and then kind of one more parallel I see is, is knowing, you know, researching um, their interests, you know. And so B2B, it's more about, you know, knowing 
the long-term goal, like, okay, are these guys going to, are they going to be into this, this product, you know, in, in months or years to have a pain that they don't know yet, you know, how can we help? And it would be to see, it's kind of the same thing. Like, okay, you know, what, why is my product important? Why do they need it? And, and kind of how can I address what their pain points are? So there's a similar cycle. I think it's just sped up a lot with B2C. You know what I always think about with, um, like, because everyone always talks about, oh, what B2B can learn from B2C, but I sometimes think it's the other way around as well, especially yeah, around content. Yeah. So one of the things yeah. that being a SaaS company, and you guys are a SaaS company as well, is that you know a lot of what you're doing isn't actually lead generation what we're trying to do is create awareness right and so the content exactly. we're putting out is we're trying to constantly add value and we're tr constantly trying to like educate people and we're trying to make people aware of the problems that we solve without ever really having like a transactional element around it and what we're really then looking for is you know does that have like a, a sort of hit further on down the line and what this means is that you're trying to just create content and you're pushing it out to educate people and what you'll find in a lot of b2c is they like depend on the vertical but because it's like the, the ticket price is like a lot lower and the decision making is potentially a lot less but what i think that can b2c can learn from b2b is this idea of content so let's imagine you had a lead gen page or a form and you've been driving people to it um via whatever mechanism let's imagine it was via affiliates um and the person that hits it doesn't convert and then what happens is they go onto facebook the next day or something and there's a retargeting pixel and then we start hitting them with the same form what i've always thought is why didn't they use the opportunity to generate more awareness around the vertical so just give them information provide pure value of like a breakdown of why they might need to think about this product or solution rather than just hitting them as another lead gen piece. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I think that it's not in B2C, it's not really thought of like that. Like people are just like, I need that immediate hit and they don't think about nurturing it. And so we do a lot of nurturing and, and obviously, yeah, like you mentioned, we're, we're a SaaS company, we're in the B2B space. And so we do a lot of nurturing because it's important to kind of, every part of the sales funnel is important to, to nurture it in, in, in its own unique way. And so I think, B2C can do a lot of that too, like making sure that, yeah, if they're not, if they see something they're not ready to buy, just kind of give them more information to kind of think, you know, down the road, like, you know, maybe they'd be interested down the road and retarget them and give them more content they can use. And so I think that's something that, that's very important. And a lot of people don't kind of stick around for that and, and kind of, kind of invest in the funnel like that. So it's interesting because it sort of feeds into like native advertising in a way, but imagine that um, outside yeah. of the native channels, you almost flip reverse it. So you'd still, you've got like an interruption thing if you're running on Facebook, for example. Um, but then the retargeting of it could be just pure informational. Um, I just don't see enough yeah. people in B2C doing that. And, they, and do you know what? A lot of companies are really bad at it in B2B as well. Like, you know, when we're talking about generating awareness and everything, most companies are still very transactional. We're just going to have to lease, lease, lease leads whether that's yeah. marketing qualified or even well, sales qualified and whatever you know yeah and and definitely and i think you can almost become a source whether you're you're a media buyer who's looking for a you know a place to to drop your your banner ads or or whether you're looking to create like a long-term lead generation source no matter if it's b2b or b2c but if you have quality content people are going to come back there's actually a um a fantasy sports site that i use that um essentially I go there year round to get advice on things and they have a ton of free content, but they also have ads that are related to, to anything about fantasy sports. And I kind of trust their, what they're saying because they, they, they're always willing to, you know, provide content and they're always willing to kind of put the effort in, it seems like for the user. And so, um, yeah, I think if you create the content, you're going to have kind of like a beacon that people can keep coming back to. And so, um, regardless if they're going to buy now, um, it's something that you can you can trust and invest in. And I think that with lead gen, um, you know, evaluating your content sources is that if you're not doing it on your own, is a content source something that you know people are going to be into? They're going to want to come back to. I think that's important as well. Yeah. Just um, I'm going to quote something to you here, Tony, because I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and he's not directly related to our work, but we share ideas and send messages and things and. He messaged me the other day and he was kind of asking for ideas about certain things. And I kind of said to him, like, you know, what you do in terms of content, you're putting content out there, you're creating stuff. And he said to me, and I quote you now, content is too much of a ball ache. That's all he said. He just, he just said, I don't have the time to do it. I don't have the time. Yeah, that's great. And I was yeah. kind of like, 
I mean, yeah, you're not wrong, but also, you know, there's a valid reason for it. So what I want to ask you is, from your perspective, what would you say to someone like that? Who maybe doesn't have the time to do it or, you know, doesn't have the investment, but know the kind of need to. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I, I think that um, that's something that uh, my, my previous job, I was, um, I worked with a lot of affiliates um, directly and, and content creators. And so um, they said that as well. They're like, I want to get started and I want to do stuff, but it's a lot of work to create this. Or I don't want to, yeah, I don't have a video camera I, and I don't have a, um, you know, I'm not good at writing. There's a lot of, a lot of reasons why they don't want to get into content. And I think the key with that is, use whatever medium that you're passionate about. Um, like for example, like for me, I, I do a lot of um, writing. So I do a lot of, you know, case studies. I do a lot of um, sales documents for, for our team. And so if, if I was kind of doing lead gen, I would do a lot of the writing side because I feel like that's where my strength would be at. But I have some friends who would be great at say, like doing it from the YouTube side or doing it from the TikTok side. And so I think trying to um trying to work with whatever medium suits your strengths is the way to go um because it's almost like it's almost like exercise like if you um like i like to run but if you for example if you're not into running you know pick a sport that that suits you i think is the way to go and that's the easiest way to get started into it um and then if if that does not align with kind of the business and what they do make sure that um you tailor that content to fit it so like for example if you know your your customers are more um, you know they're they're more on the music side of things you know doing something on SoundCloud or something and, and just making sure that you always you always kind of stick to that is, is the key. So what so one of the things that Everflow works with a lot obviously is affiliate programs right especially in sort of B two C. So yeah. how does how does content work in affiliate programs or doesn't it or is it post the affiliate program like with the retargeting and stuff that I was talking about or you know. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, of kind of how content works, um, it's interesting. So we have we have clients who are B two C, and so they use um, the affiliate uh, side of things in a couple different ways. Uh, first is just for a referral program. So like if they um, if they're like say like a you know um, they make like a snack food or something, or they have a unique kind of uh, consumer product, what they can do is they can basically offer a pro program as a way to kind of spread the word. And so in terms of how content kind of fits on that side is that good content will get uh, that amplified so much faster. And so we have a, a customer right now who is an RV, um, kind of like an Airbnb for RVs. So they're called Harvest Hosts. And so what they do is they actually have their affiliates who are all these RV people go out and show videos at the locations and saying, hey, you know what, like, this is why you want to be a part of this program. This is why it's a cool offer. And so that quality content is great because it shows up on universal search hire. It shows up on Google, you know, it shows up. Um, uh, it's great for the people with shorter attention spans, you know, like it's great for, um, it's, it can be easily shared. And so that content does well on the referral side of things and same with um, the affiliate side of things. So if, if you do go that route and say you are a brand who's doing B2C and you want to amplify what you're doing, affiliate programs are the best because there's really no risk. It's essentially based on, um, you know, you don't, you don't pay out unless an action is delivered. So it's a great way to amplify your sales. And, and obviously with quality content and content where people spend a little bit more time, they're going to have a lot better results. Yeah, and it's great for brand awareness where there isn't uh, an outcome anyway, exactly. right? Because it's like, and exactly, it, yeah. Whatever, you, it, let's say you're working on a cost per lead, and seven percent of people fill the form, and there's still you know, thousands of people have been exposed to the brand um, either via the ad or visited the landing page anyway, and then they've yeah, consumed exactly. and, that content. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's almost like a free retargeting kind of. It's like they get to keep seeing this. They're seeing the companies more and more, you know. And so that's kind of why we've always been, even though we work with, you know, we're obviously biased, but yeah, the, the affiliate side of the things and the, the partnership side of things is huge. It, it just kind of, it allows people to kind of get involved and, and spread. It's like you're multiplying your workforce. So I, I think it's, it's always a good, good reach to do. So. Yeah. Daniel and I were talking, I can't even remember if it's on a podcast or not, because it's just it all molds into one, but um, real life and, the podcast life but um <laughs> we were talking about affiliate traffic and talking about how great it is for brand awareness but you're still working on those for example we were talking about a cost per lead basis and so you can really see how quality content is so important to drive that brand awareness and this 
we were talking about it in the sense of how lead generators need to become brands and brands need to become lead generators. And so what you'll find with a lot of lead generators can be that they'll knock up like a really quick idea for a brand and the copy they'll spend 10 minutes on or get like a junior marketing person to potentially knock something up in the imagery or just be some like stock images they've grabbed of old people that match whatever. But in reality, yeah. when you talk about like the influence that high quality content can have on people, whatever channel you put it on, it makes you realize like why you need to be so like on it and create really good quality content and put stuff out that is original and really get people like invested in your brand. And it comes back to this idea of like who you're targeting and why it will resonate with them and things like that. Um, so even though the, what I'm trying to say is that even though affiliate can feel like an easy channel, because like you said, you're just paying like cost per outcome, you're not paying, you're not at the cold face potentially doing cost per click, working on that brand message and working on the high quality content is just as important because that's what's going to resonate with people. It's going to stick in their mind. It's going to make them revisit you, make them tell their friends and family and whoever else about you as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of why we, uh, at Everflow, we always kind of preach, um, you know, knowing if you do have an affiliate program, knowing what um, each of your affiliates are doing and how they're doing it. And so we have a, you know, we have different reports where you can drill down and see the exact placements. Say, you know what, this affiliate is doing really well on Facebook. And you can kind of look and see, okay, how is this happening? Or this affiliate is doing well on um, email. How is this happening? And knowing kind of, and, and kind of nurturing that saying, you know what, this person's doing well, we're going to we're going to pay them a little bit more. Or we're going to, we're going to give them different resources. And so kind of investing in the people that are doing things the right way. And also too, I would say is that with content um, on the affiliate side, a lot of our partners do their own education. So like they'll have, um, you know, seminars or, or webinars that kind of say, okay, this is how, this is how to be successful. Here's some content you can use. Here's a creative suite you can use. And so that stuff helps as well too. So kind of giving people the tools to be successful and, and giving them tips like, um, you know, like the, I mentioned earlier about the um, the company that does the the Harvest Host that does the the RV for Airbnb type stuff, and so with them, you know, they they'll give tips on how to um, promote certain seasonal things, how to promote um, different different parts of their service, and so yeah, it's all about kind of educating them too, and it's important because if not, you can have a bunch of banner ads or you can have a bunch of content that is just thrown out there, like you said, like maybe like a junior person or just done paid with some company who's kind of um, you know, doing it by the, you know, kind of like a Fiverr type service or something. But the thing is, is that you're not going to get the results. So it's all about kind of, as my boss would say, um, uh, focusing more and doing less, which I think is kind of a unique statement. But um, yeah, it's all about kind of taking your time to say, okay, you know, what's going to have the biggest uh, impact in the end. So. So do you know when you get like the end of the month report and you go, well, I didn't do it because you told me to do less. Does that sit well with you? Yeah. Or? <laughs> I, well, I think now it does because he told me about that. So I think now I could get away with that. But uh, yeah. I think we all want that, boss. Yeah, no, it's interesting. No, he's great. It, it's interesting because, yeah, it's like, it, I, I thought about that statement. It was kind of, it was kind of interesting. And I think that it's, it's all about kind of, you know, thinking, okay, how can I, you're not going to be putting in like the output. You're not going to say, you know what, I have a lot of stuff coming out, but you, the stuff you do is going to hit a lot bigger. And so we did that too. Like we spend so much time making the content interesting, um, making it, it relevant and, and readable. And I think it's not as much, you know, I could do double the amount of stuff I'm doing, but the stuff I do is always well received and shared. And, and, and you can see, I see that kind of lending to sales. And so that's kind of what we're, we're all about is, is yeah. really just it, you're it's qu it's quality, time, over so. qu quality over quantity effectively, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. When we do these kind of podcasts, it's always interesting. It comes back to me is that it kind of feeds back into this sort of mindset shift. What I mean by that is that kind of old school lead gen one point zero that we're kind of moving away from slightly, where that was very transactional, very quick. You want results instantly. A lot of this stuff is about maybe not as quick, having to put a bit of work in, not seeing results straight away, I mean, able to track it, that kind of thing. You know, when you're talking, one thing I, I'm, I'm always interested with quality um, with quality content is. The idea of almost uh, qualifying leads and in a weird way getting fewer leads through and aiming for that. And, you know, say it's like an advertorial, let's say it's native, you know, it's an advertorial. People are reading like a whole long page. Like, you know, if they get to the bottom of that, they're going to be fairly interested in what you've got to say. But equally, you're sort of, you're cutting a lot of people out of can't bother to do all that reading, for example. Um, 
I was kind of wondering what you feel like sort of this idea is kind of like mindset shift, I guess is what I'm trying to sort of phrase it as, kind of new way of doing it. Yeah, I, well, it's interesting with the, with the lead gen side with that, with qualifying leads, because B2B, it's a lot tougher to qualify leads. You know, you could have somebody that may, you know, want more information and they may not even know what, you know, they may not even fully understand your service. And so with B2C, it's like, essentially you have these leads coming in. Most of the time they're, they're going to be great because as long as they can afford kind of what you have, you know, and, they, and they're, they're, they already have a little bit of interest and it's more direct. It's not as abstract as some of the B2B stuff. So I think that's, that's kind of key in, in kind of qualifying, but also having, like you mentioned, in terms of having a full amount of content, like if they're going to read, you know, if they're going to be checking out your blog posts or they're going to be checking out your videos and you know, they watched it, um, having some sort of mechanism to capture their, their leads is, and is great. And also, you know, just be your, your qualification is a lot so much easier with BTC. And I think that, you know, they, they've already done the effort. They found you. It's, it's not like this is, um, you know, you're, a lot of times you're in BTC, you're purchasing things that are not, you know, Maseratis or huge, huge purchases. So it, it's all about kind of, you kind of have them. So it's a little bit less um, qualification because you know that it's, it's more of an immediate purchase versus like a monthly subscription type thing or month or like a, you know, a SaaS type thing. So it's a lot, a lot quicker with that. And, and I would say too, that, um, you know, in terms of that, having content that is, you know, whatever you do, having a quick sign up mechanism or quick, you know, qualification mechanism is great. So if you can, you know, on your, you know, on your YouTube channel or on your, um, on your Instagram, just having information that is like, okay, Hey, here's, here's, um, you know, to get more information, go here. If, if you like our content, go here, whether that's like a pop-up, whether that's a, um, uh, a link tree, something like that, but just having a, a, a mechanism to, to kind of keep that going. is great too. Then when you mentioned the, um, the people coming in as leads with B2B, um, the, you know, there can be like a bit of confusion or anything. Is this like sales qualified or marketing qualified or is it? Yeah, it, it's, I think it's the confusion is um, it's more of a sales qualified thing because I think that the marketing, it does a lot to, to get them interested. And I think that that is kind of the, the job that marketing does is to, to generate interest and, and get people to read what you're saying. And if they're engaged enough to fill out, um, to fill out a form or to, to go the next step, then I think then it's, it's working, but I think it's more sales because um, in B2B, there's so many different segments and, and people could be coming from a different vertical. Like we work with so many niches and verticals that it, it's, you know, we want to know, are, is, are they right for this part of what we do? Or are they right for that part of it? So it's a lot of um, qualifying to, to know kind of how we approach them and, and what they're going to be interested with. And so I think, yeah, I think it's more sales for sure. Mm, cool. And obviously when it's podcast owners, we kind of try and give people some tips to kind of think about, to go away and sort of stick with. So I like to sort of bring things back around at the end and kind of, I know it's simplified too much, but to put you, to put you on the spot slightly, people listening, they're going to go away to this. There are a few takeaway points they can think, right, I'm going to invest in some good content in any form. What do they need to think about? What do they need to remember? What are the kind of key things? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in terms of, of kind of takeaways, I think the first thing is, is to um, spend time developing stuff that people are actually going to check out. So, you know, like if you if you're doing it may seem like you're doing a lot less, but make sure it's readable, make sure it's viewable, uh, make sure it addresses a, a pain point that your customers are into. Um, you know, we see a lot of uh, everybody does it. Like if you have an issue, you're like, Hey, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get in better shape or I'm trying to learn a new skill, you know, making sure you have, you have content that addresses what your uh, customers would be into, I think is key. And if it takes a longer time, that's fine because in the end, that content is going to be something that you can share. That's something you can amplify on any channel that, that you have access to. So I think that's kind of a, a big thing. Um, and then I would say to, um, using the style that you're comfortable with. So, you know, if you're not a video person, you know, don't worry about YouTube, try to find another way to get into that, to access your customers. Or if you're not a, um, you know, if you don't feel comfortable or, or you're done with Facebook, you know, try, um, try Twitter, you know, going and going a different route for content. And I think that's important as well. And then I, I think too, is, is 
exploring new, um, I know we didn't discuss, but exploring new kind of um, content types. Like um, for example, if you do have, um, you know, if you're doing, if you're a brand and you're looking to kind of just engage your audience, um, you use that something like a poll, you know, polls do really well. And, and polls also have, um, there's different companies that have polls with uh, lead capture mechanisms built in. So go that route or do like a, um, you know, offer more kind of discounts and, and, um, and things like that. Just more stuff that kind of um, is unique and stands out and catches people's attention. So I think that's something that you can also do as well and trying different avenues. Um, and, and then I think beyond that, you know, making sure you, if you, if you have that need to just use a service that amplifies. So like either it's a referral program or an affiliate program, making sure that you can connect with people that are, that are, you know, are determined and kind of will help spread your message and, and help you generate more leads, I think is key as well too. Yeah, perfect. And I think the thing is as well that we touched on earlier with the qualification um, content can be used for as well. So I suppose it depends what you're after. So if you want like pure brand awareness, you just want to create content that's going to like resonate massively. But if you're after sales from the content that you create, it's almost as important the leads that you potentially remove or the, you know, the qualification of that individual by your content. Um to get the high quality leads through that are going to, you know, convert at a high rate. Um, and I sometimes think people forget that. They just think it's like content for content sake. The, I do think you've got two types, sort of clickbaity, you know, yeah. high brand awareness, high volume versus, you know, do you want sales? If so, work on actually removing people by the content that you create. Yeah, and I think content doesn't have to, I think the term, you know, high or quality content, you think, oh, I'm writing like these long blog posts and they're they're very detailed. And and I don't think so. I think it's quality content is essentially anything that is useful and anything that will help you achieve your goals. And I think that it can be something as simple as, as like I mentioned, like doing a poll or something on social media, like it's something that's going to engage the audience or it can be lengthy, you know, it could be a white paper, it could be an ebook. And so it's all about, what would engage your audience and what would make them kind of, you know, want to stick around and, and come visit you more or become a, an advocate for your, for whatever you're doing. And so, I, yeah, it's not really a length. It's, it's more about kind of, is it actually good stuff? You know, is it, is it useful? Is it, you know, and that, that kind of ties back into, you know, maybe um, focusing more and doing less, you know, just kind of, you know, I'm going to spend time working on something that's going to hit better than just throwing a bunch of stuff out there because everybody's doing it. And I think, in the legion space that is a, a trend you know thinking oh you know i can get a bunch of leads by doing this and and um yeah i'm mean, use the hottest technique to bring in a bunch of leads but uh you know are those leads going to convert and also are they going to come back you know are they going to is there going to be a um in, in b2b there's a big relationship component where it's like you know are these people going to stick around or are they just going to churn and, and take off and i think that with b2c you can definitely kind of use that lesson there too it's, it's a kind of um, create stuff that people want to come back to or they're, they're going to build that trust and kind of stick around for the long haul. Definitely. So it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Absolutely tons of value for people listening. Um, I'm sure they've learned loads. I know I certainly have. Um, I'm going to have to go back and transcribe this down and kind of take these notes and do so about ourselves um, in a B2B sense. But um, yeah, fantastic. Tony. Thank you so much for having us um, on the show today. We appreciate it. Um, that was episode 71 the value of creating quality content for Legion. Thanks for listening to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe to hear more from those at the very cutting edge of the Lead Gen world.